name that should strike fear into the hearts of anyone who played video games in the early 2000s, and realistically, even those who didn't. Once a simple pharmaceutical company, Umbrella quickly devolved into a hellish mix of eugenics and biohazardous waste. That's a fun way to describe a company, don't you think? Depending on who you ask and where you look, the corporation may or may not have dissolved to nothingness. Organizations that large, profitable, and dangerous don't tend to simply disappear though. So today, we'll move their operations into our world and ask the following question. What if the Umbrella Corporation was real? Let's get into it. To make sure everyone is on the same page, we'll start with the origins of Umbrella. In the Resident Evil universe, there was once a company that seemed to have a finger in every pie. The British conglomerate known as Umbrella was involved in cosmetics, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, industrial machine production, health foods, transportation, consumer products, and tourism. And more. That's a classic, diverse portfolio, you know. However, its goal wasn't just to amass huge amounts of money forever and always. A lot of what was going on here was meant to cover up illegal activities. While keeping up public appearances with all of its legitimate business transactions, Umbrella also started developing bioweapons for militaries around the world. This kind of thing would be frowned upon if done out in the open, so all of those products mentioned earlier kept puttering along. Eventually, they had managed to stockpile all sorts of deadly, horrible viruses that had been outright banned and kept them all under the guise of developing vaccines. Very sneaky. So why would a corporation do all of this though? Surely the risks outweigh the benefits, especially when dealing with stuff that could cause irreparable damage to the fabric of our society. Well, the thing with Umbrella is that they're not actually in it for the money. Sure, the cash flow is nice for laundering underground funds, and all these corporate activities definitely cover up for whatever nefarious deeds they're doing, but in reality, what Umbrella really wanted was to advance humanity through the eventual implementation of genetically altered superhumans. It's magnificent. Classic. They did their best, and actually got pretty close with Wesker, but eventually that superhuman pipe dream folded. Then the whole Raccoon City thing happened, and that pretty much spelled the end for Umbrella. Once you cause a mini zombie apocalypse and people can prove you're at fault, there's really no coming back from it. Poor, poor Umbrella. So now that we've done a very brief history lesson, we can start applying some of that Umbrella goodness to our world. Let's start with the beginning, and to do that we'll have to go back to the 60s. The company got its start on the backs of a bunch of prominent men members of the eugenics community at the time. Most were virologists of some sort, but they were looking to have an impact on the world, and that impact meant killing off the weaker humans. They traveled to find a flower with viral properties rumored to cause human ascension, but were unable to replicate the effects back in America. In order to continue their experiments, they needed money, and to get more money, they started Umbrella Pharmaceuticals. Eventually, this led them to creating the T-Virus, which basically became a zombie creation serum sold to the United States military as a weapon. Ah, the military-industrial complex. It always results in positive change and more money for everyone, not just the overproduction of instruments of death. Hooray! So looking at how all that played out, if Umbrella actually existed, folks probably wouldn't have known too much about it back in the 60s and 70s. On the surface, this company would be making basic medical supplies and consumer pharmaceuticals, and in the background, they'd be pulling off their shady deals and creating horrifying zombie viruses. Gotta love it. This kind of behavior continued on for years, and eventually the Umbrella Corporation came to be. Gone were the days of simple pharma cover-ups, now we've got more power and influence. Plus, with potential immunity in certain people, they have come up with new ways to make sure that the T-Virus stayed deadly. Enter bio-organic weapons, or BOWs. Horrid, chimeric monsters meant to take out any survivors. These were quickly followed up by the creation of the G-Virus, which was thought to be the superhuman creator that the folks up top had originally imagined. Again, these advances were done in the shadows and only sold to people who could guaranteed clean up after themselves without attracting any sort of unwanted attention. So in the real world, we'd simply see Umbrella growing as a company. Governments would definitely get involved, but only underground, never willingly leaking anything. Eventually, nemesis T-types and tyrants with extra weapons were developed, meaning that hyper-intelligent mutants could be used in more situations. These guys just don't know when to stop. As the company grew even larger, they acquired some enormous luxury liners to both keep up appearances as a legitimate business, as well as to transport bioweapons overseas. So if this were to happen in real life, there's a very real chance that any of you cruise ship fans out there might have boarded a ship with a bunch of T-Virus somewhere inside. 
held any goof-ups and you could have been infected. It kind of reminds me of the whole Diamond Princess debacle. Remember that? It was like a lifetime ago. As the world continued to allow Umbrella to grow pretty much unfettered, they kind of pulled an Icarus, flying too close to the sun and whatnot. They went super international and started really developing their paramilitary groups. Mercenaries were brought on and a lot of influence was leveraged through violence. Hell, they even had moles in the US Army who learned that the states eventually planned on abandoning Umbrella after restarting their own bioweapons manufacturing. Again, love that military industrial complex. Nothing could ever go wrong after giving a massive corporation its own personal army and then trying to undercut them. This is probably when Umbrella starts to make some more headlines in our world, even if the mainstream media doesn't do a great job of it. Questions would inevitably be asked about where their allegiances lie and what they plan on doing with all these mercenaries. Of course, Umbrella wasn't the only organization with people on the inside, and thanks to some very sly industrial espionage, it started to destabilize. And when a company that holds that much power and begins to show a little bit of shakiness, you should be worried. All the eventual shakeups that were happening led to the eventual Raccoon City outbreak, where a great deal of Umbrella employees who live there were exposed to the virus. When you accidentally doom an entire city, things are probably gonna go sideways. What an incredible fall from grace. Now, in the games, a lot of what happened there was covered up, but I'm not so sure that would be the case in real life. Something like that doesn't get tucked away so easily, and I'm sure more details would make their way to the public. However, the downfall of Umbrella and their shift to the black market would definitely still happen. Again, when you spend so much money on making deadly weapons that everyone wants, you're not just gonna stop selling them, you'll just stop selling them legitimately. So with that, the world would be much more bioweapon rich. We'd probably see a few more zombie outbreaks every few years. And to be honest, with the way other mega corporations are growing in our world, I wouldn't be too surprised if some crazy weaponry started causing major issues in our future. What else would all those power-hungry megalomaniacs need a lot of money for? Hopefully it isn't zombie-based, but who knows? Maybe it's worse. So there you have it. If the Umbrella Corporation was real, we probably wouldn't know about their shady dealings and viral weapons until it was too late. And even then, a lot of it would get covered up. At least we'd have some nice pharmaceuticals and cruise ships though, right? So what do you think? Would it be more dramatic? Less dramatic? How would you handle a Raccoon City style outbreak? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more pleasant ones from Does Technology Affect Our Memories? Darwin Ang says, I was once able to remember phone numbers. Now it's difficult due to my reliance on cell phone phone book. You and me both. I feel like I only remember mine and my mom's at this point. Horror Habit says, I've learned a lot from all the information availability. And the more you learn, the more you can learn. It's a good point, but how much of it do you think you can retain long term? And Big Savage G says, multitasking is complete bullshit. People cannot focus on a few things at the same time, and if they do somehow manage to do more than one task at the same time, then everything will be done partially and not sufficiently. I think that is true, but I also feel like a lot of jobs expect multitasking to some degree, probably more than ever before. So it might not be the perfect way to do something, but it probably is faster, especially in some situations. And that's the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.